In a recent video, I told you about Amazon Sidewalk and the fact that we're enabling a scary Skynet environment with the mesh network built by Amazon. Unfortunately, there's an even bigger picture and it goes even beyond Amazon and it's called the Bluetooth Mesh Network. This network is supported by many companies that are members of the association Bluetooth SIG. What is different with the Bluetooth Mesh Network is that it does not need the internet. Today, I'll explain the different technologies involved with the Bluetooth Mesh Networking and show you the intent and direction of the Bluetooth SIG organization. I'll make sure to use their own words. And then you will see for yourself if this is exciting technology or an extreme surveillance environment. And these companies think this is a great thing. Really, after hearing this, you will want to be a caveman. Stay tuned. I'm on the platform odyssey.com and I'm now one of the top creators on there. Just for insurance in case I get the platform, please follow me there using the link in the description. I have a VPN service, Bytes VPN. My company also sells the Google phones and VPN routers. These products are made to make your identity disappear on the internet. And hopefully this video will explain why these products are important. If you're interested in them, they are on my app, Braxme. The link is in the description. Let me tell you how I came across the Bluetooth mesh network. I was doing more research on what Amazon is up to with Amazon Sidewalk. I already had an older Amazon Echo right here that was donated to me, but just to compare, I bought this newer Echo. I thought I had to do a teardown to show you how they tick. At least that was my video plan. But nowadays you don't even have to do that. All you had to do was check the FCC ID, which is back here, and then you can review the submitted test paperwork to the FCC. So I did look at that. I was also able to see the internals of the circuit boards and see the antenna placement in that report, for example. And here you can see actual photos of the circuit board, which they had to submit to the FCC. And this is the radio frequency report for the newer Echo. What was interesting when I read the specs of the Amazon Echo up to the third generation was that there was no mention of a transceiver in the 900 megahertz range. It was not stated in the FCC report, but the use of 900 megahertz was something I mentioned in my video as being part of Amazon's sidewalk. It appears that the Amazon Echoes were made to transmit signals in the 2.402 to 2.480 gigahertz range. This happens to be the Bluetooth range just below Wi-Fi. This caused me to focus on researching Bluetooth more. As it turns out, the Amazon Echoes are designed to use some version of Bluetooth as a supporting capability for something even more encompassing, which is called the Bluetooth Mesh Network. I'll explain the Bluetooth technology in a moment. This technology is not limited to Amazon. And this technology is fairly new. But first, let's see specifically how Amazon has bifurcated the frequencies they use for their Amazon sidewalk. As I already said, the Echoes were meant to send and receive signals in the 2.4 GHz range, which is designed for Bluetooth. The 900 MHz range is apparently handled by the Ring camera, and I didn't have that unit, so I couldn't check the FCC report. But I saw it mentioned in a security document from Amazon. Now, the unique thing about the 900 megahertz band versus the Bluetooth band at 2.4 gigahertz is that 900 megahertz has a longer range, typically up to half a mile. The Bluetooth range is a little shorter and is more sensitive to obstructions, but it can handle more data. Since there are likely many times more echoes than ring cameras, that would explain why a longer range would be a more useful thing for a ring. Apparently, in the design of IoT or Internet of Things devices that will use Amazon Sidewalk, the devices will be able to switch over between 900 megahertz and Bluetooth depending on what's available. So Amazon is ensuring a very robust platform for wide area networking using radio. For now, I will focus the rest of this discussion on just Bluetooth. What is not known to many people is that there are actually two Bluetooth protocols 
Bluetooth Classic and Bluetooth Low Energy. The one we use with headphones, earpods, wireless speakers, and car audio is the original Bluetooth Classic designed for wireless personal area networks or WPAN. So this is the one most of you are familiar with. You are meant to pair two devices and then the devices can communicate at short range usually within 10 feet and this is meant for continuous communications like audio. There is a second standard and frankly this wasn't used much until contact tracing was enabled a year ago and this new standard is actually a different kind of Bluetooth and it was called Bluetooth Low Energy or BLE. This is meant to transmit and receive at a longer range. It is also meant to be used with minimal bandwidth. Just short bursts of information and it was designed to be used by Internet of Things devices, IoT such as security sensors, home automation, motion detectors, and so on. What is interesting here is that BLE uses the same hardware as your standard Bluetooth. So without any change to the Bluetooth radio, a device can be enabled to use BLE. This then enabled your phones to send BLE messages last year, and this was for the purpose of contact tracing. That is if you downloaded that version of the iOS or Android that enabled that feature. So practically all modern devices with Bluetooth can operate with BLE simply with software changes. And that's how they enabled BLE on Amazon Echoes. And this in itself is scary because now without your knowledge, your phones can emit potentially long range beacons using BLE. And many devices used for home automation and security all run with BLE now. Now this will get more interesting. BLE by itself is just a technology for short burst radio transmissions as well as radio reception in the 2.4 GHz range for Bluetooth. But the characteristics of BLE are different than your personal use of Bluetooth with headphones and speakers. The difference is the range and the fact that it uses very little power as suggested in the name. The range of BLE can reach up to one half mile outdoors and less indoors instead of the 10 feet. And this is also using the same radio. So the purpose of BLE is to send the small amount of data generated by sensors and allow instructions to be sent to the sensors, all done by the exchange of messages between devices. For the last 10 years or so, BLE was being integrated into a larger capability that has a different kind of potential, and this is called the Bluetooth Mesh Network. Although this was being worked on for a long time, the actual standard for Bluetooth Mesh wasn't even finalized until December 2020, so it's pretty new. In fact, it's so new that even I didn't really know anything about it. So the capability called Bluetooth Mesh Network is actually powered by the base feature Bluetooth Low Energy, which is the basis for radio transmissions and reception. I needed to give you the background on the technology used, but the real focus today will be on the Bluetooth Mesh Network, which will be quite interesting. By the way, just for confirmation, I checked and the Amazon Echo is certified for the Bluetooth mesh network. So together with the hundreds of Chinese made electronics, all are certified to work with Bluetooth mesh. What exactly is Bluetooth mesh? The Bluetooth mesh network is a way to create a network for small, low power devices that can operate without the need for the internet. Devices are designed to work by communicating directly with each other through the radio instead of passing through the internet. In some cases, they are enhanced by the use of the internet as the Amazon Echo example shows. Aside from each device being able to send and receive a message, each device can also forward messages to another listening device until the message arrives at its final destination. All these devices are naturally wireless. Now Amazon expands on this mesh network capability. Using Amazon Echo, they use the infrastructure of the Amazon network servers to manage the flow of information between devices and calls that the Amazon Sidewalk. So you might say that the Amazon Sidewalk is a centralized enhancement to the Bluetooth mesh network and it is tied to the internet. The Bluetooth mesh network by itself can operate without an internet. 
The basic way Bluetooth mesh operates is that there are slave devices which can be security sensors, lights, door locks, motion detectors, thermostats, switches, RFID readers. Then there's another class of devices which are called gateways. These gateways are able to send messages to the slave devices. The gateways can also do a hold and forward of messages so the slaves do not need to connect all the time. An example of a gateway device is an Amazon Echo. Another would be some Google Nest Home Automation Controller Unit. There are other ways to pass messages between devices. The designer of a set of security devices, for example, could designate other devices that are plugged in as a friend and use it to forward messages to the gateway and hold messages for low power devices that are running on batteries. Each slave device can receive instructions from the network and the range can piggyback over existing slave devices as well. So if the range of a slave light bulb is one half mile, it can get messages forwarded by other light bulbs so the range of message forwarding can stretch very far. When a user wants to set up a mesh, he must first provision each device so that they all belong to the same network. So a matching process is performed and that generates a network security key that is known only to the devices tied to a particular owner. For example, a particular business would provision all devices to be part of that business mesh network. That network key is also used to exchange security keys for doing encryption between devices in the same network. So in theory, the network is robust from attacks. The devices can of course receive messages from any other Bluetooth mesh network devices outside of their network. But if they are not part of the same network, in other words, not having the same network key, then they do not forward those messages. The messages are just discarded. This then ensures that each device only supports those on the same network key. This is a little different with Amazon since in their case, the network key is all of Amazon sidewalks, so all traffic is captured for those on an Amazon sidewalk device. And then that is forwarded to Amazon via the Amazon Echoes everywhere. I just want to emphasize the distinction here. A Bluetooth mesh network does not require an internet. As long as it finds a device with the same network key, a device will send, receive, and forward messages to other devices it finds via the radio. So in theory, a gateway device can connect and control any other device sharing the same network key, no matter the size of the network and the distance, as long as each hop can be done within radio range. And of course, the gateway device can connect the computers to store the data it collects. Each device is uniquely identified with an identifier, and that is part of the message. And the message is encrypted by the pre-distributed public and private keys, which was done during the provisioning process. Messages are very short. In most cases, it's just a switch on and off command or some value like a thermostat temperature or a motion trigger signal or an RFID read. Also, each message is given a TTL or time to live, so they will not forward the messages forever. Depending on the device, after a short amount of time, the messages are no longer forwarded. This is how they control the volume of messages. Now, since the world is made up of sheeple, the expectation of the Bluetooth SIG organization is that the world will be flooded with Bluetooth mesh-enabled devices, potentially having thousands of devices per mile. So there will always be a way to forward messages from device to device to eventually arrive at a target device, all using the radio waves and with no need for any kind of networking infrastructure. I will now tell you the example used by Bluetooth SIG to describe how they expect the technology to be used. They call this smart buildings get truly smart. So listen to this. Imagine arriving at the office in your car early one dark winter morning. The security system lets you in and a parking bay is automatically allocated to you. The bay number over the parking space lights up so you can drive easily to it. The parking bay allocation system is updated to note that this space is now occupied. Entering the building occupancy sensors note your arrival and identify you from the wearable technology about your person. You take the elevator to the second floor and exit. You're the first to arrive, as usual. As the lift doors open, the lights from the elevator to your office 
in the kitchen comes on. Coffee is deemed of strategic significance in your company. Other areas are left in darkness to save power. You walk to your office and enter, closing the door behind you. The LED downlights and your desk lamp are already on and at exactly the level you prefer. You notice the temperature is a little warmer than the main office space, reflecting your personal preference. Proximity with your computer automatically logs you in. Your day started well with the building responding to your needs. Taking into account your preferences, it's clear that systems are being used efficiently. What made this possible? Your company installed a Bluetooth mesh network some months ago, starting with a mesh lighting system. Later, the mesh was added to with occupancy sensors, environmental sensors, a wireless heating control system, and a mesh-based car park management system. The company is saving money on electricity and heating, and work environments have become personalized, boosting personal productivity. Maintenance costs are going down since adding items like additional light switches no longer requires expensive and disruptive physical wiring. Data is allowing the building management team to learn about the building, its services, and how people act within it and are using this data to make optimizations. The Bluetooth mesh network has made it easier and cheaper to be in control of building services, to wirelessly interact with them, and to automate their behaviors. You wonder how you ever lived with such advanced building technology in the past. Okay, let's return to Earth now. Now think of this description given by Bluetooth SIG. What exactly is the significant personal benefit of what they just described? If you listen to it closely, the benefit is really for security and control to the business. I see such a marginal personal benefit. Like you don't have to turn switches on and off and the thermostat adjusts to you and doors automatically open. Really? However, the cost is now that every move you make, every time you go to the bathroom, every arrival that is one minute late, every time you talk to a coworker, every time you take a bite of a snack, every time you answer your cell phone, everything is recorded. Now, since a Bluetooth mesh isn't limited to a particular business, everything in your environment could have thousands of sensors, all that can detect your wearable identity device. Remember, I mentioned that. The wearable identity device is your chip. Oh yeah, they could force you to inject it under your skin like an RFID for a pet or that company in Wisconsin. But this technology is tied clearly to identification. As I mentioned in another video, if you have an enhanced driver's license in the USA, then you are already carrying an RFID chip with a fixed identifier. The point is that this is the actual vision of the many big tech companies that are actually part of Bluetooth SIG, which of course includes companies like Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and so on. Our new world will be flooded with sensors. This is where we are headed, folks. This is supposed to be the new world and we are supposed to love it. At what point do we pull back and say, wait, there's a societal cost to this. This is increasing the level of surveillance in society where you could be tracked even without an internet with every inch of movement. What I fear is that of course, this will not be limited to businesses. There are already sensors now tracking our movements using license plate readers and street cameras and RFID readers. These are government sensors because there's no need for an internet. You can basically just plug millions of these devices all around a city, and basically you will have created a world full of sensors every few feet. There will not be any significant infrastructure cost, and as long as the density of devices is high, there will be no need for any internet. A gateway collecting all the data could be far away and accumulating data for an entire city, a large city like a Los Angeles. And as expected, just like the Amazon Echo, the average person will buy these and basically build a surveillance infrastructure at no cost to big tech or to government. We will pay for it ourselves, most of us willingly. And once these small devices are installed everywhere, how do you undo this? Remember that this is the technology image being presented by the Bluetooth SIG organization. The world is truly being run by a bunch of fools. 
This kind of infrastructure for surveillance would really benefit a communist regime. Full control. Did I mention that most of the devices certified for the Bluetooth mesh network are made in China? China will likely be the first heavy user. I keep remembering that guy that left a comment on my video that says, Technology will keep moving forward. You're living in a cave. We are really providing an excellent infrastructure for all the repressive governments in the world. I'm sure people living in those countries would rather be in a cave. Think, people. Think before you flood your homes with IoT devices like Google Nest, Amazon Echoes, Ring cameras. In the future, the devices will include robots and drones running autonomously and without the need for an internet, but yet knowing everything. Scary stuff. These times are getting crazier. I don't have a solution for this other than to spread the message and make people aware. These mesh networks can only succeed if we as a population allow it and give these big tech companies our trust. We need to withhold that trust. Stop buying products that promote a mesh network environment. I hope you find my videos of value. If you do, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get more of this content. You can support the cause by joining us on Patreon. Thank you for watching.